I don't know about you, but that request is more difficult to grant than most of us might think. You see, there are thousands of words used in a caregiving setting here in Japan, and even those commonly used among them are still over a hundred, and I don't want to bore you with videos listing all those vocabularies. Also, I actively avoid making long videos, so yeah, there's that. But being a good Samaritan that I am, your request is my command. In this video, I'll share with you some of the words I usually encounter at work that I deemed easy enough for anyone, absolutely anyone, to remember and use. Kaigo. Let's start with this word, shall we? Mainly because this channel revolves around care, or in Japanese, kaigo. Also, oddly enough, you rarely encounter this word in a Japanese language school, either in the Philippines or here in Japan. Again, I don't know about you, but when I usually try to memorize some Japanese words, I try to decipher and interpret the kanji characters that makes up those words. In the context of caregiving, kai means concern oneself. Pair it with go, which means to safeguard or protect, and you'll have a rough meaning of to concern oneself into protecting someone. Kaigosha. Speaking of someone, this character may mean someone or person in Japanese. There are a lot of Japanese words that incorporate this character as some sort of a suffix that transforms that word into someone specializing in something. A person specializing in taking care of someone is called a kaigosha. If you're going to work here as an entry-level care worker, you might be called a kaigosha in your facility. Kaigo shisetsu. Speaking of facility, in Japanese, facility is shisetsu. This word is composed of these two characters that mean to perform and to give and establishment. Again, in the context of caregiving, an establishment or a facility that gives or performs caregiving services is called kaigo shisetsu. Koreisha. Nyukyosha, Ryosha. So, who do you give your caregiving services to? Easy. Of course, to those people who need caregiving services, and they are usually the elderly, or in Japanese, Koreisha. Again, this kanji character means someone or a person, and in this case, a person whose age is high. It is important to remember, however, that those old people inside your kaigo shisetsu are not always called koreisha. This is just textbook terminology. Not everyone uses this in a normal day-to-day -day basis. So, what are these old people inside the facility are called? They are either called a ryosha or a new kyosha. Ryosha is somewhat an umbrella term that covers any one that consumes anything. That is why in English, Ryosha can be roughly translated to a customer, a patron, a client, a consumer, or the user in an end-user license agreement. Ryosha inside a Kaigo Shisetsu are basically old-age customers consuming caregiving services. New Kyosha, on the other hand, is a title bestowed upon those Ryosha who resides inside the Shisetsu, whatever Shisetsu that is. Basically, New Kyosha means a tenant or an occupant. You can be a new kyosha if you are renting an apartment. Old people residing in a kaigo shisetsu are also called new kyosha. Basically, those old people residing in a caregiving facility are not called old people. They are called instead a tenant, a user, a customer, or a resident. Kurumaisu Let's go into the things that are usually used in caregiving. First and the most common is the wheelchair, or in Japanese, kurumaisu. Depending on your kaigo shisetsu, 80 to 90% of the new kyosha are on a kurumaisu. You may be familiar with this character, which commonly means an automobile. But a wheelchair is not an automobile, so why is there a kanji character of a car in it? That is because the least known meaning of this kanji character is a wheel or a castor. An undriven wheel that is designed to be attached to the bottom of a larger object to enable that object to be moved. <laughs> this means a chair and is composed of two characters which mean to lean and a tree. That is, to lean on wood, to sit on a chair made of wood. Oha! This means a child and is not related to a chair or a chair made of child. No, stop that. Just that, with the introduction of Zen Buddhism in Japan, this character was often read as Su, and that tradition was carried over over the years. 
tsue, tsukue, makura. Although these words are commonly used by a new Kyosha, they are not that closely related to one another. I just chose them to be in the same part of this video because if you try to look at them like this, it would be inevitable to mistake one for another. So let's decipher these pieces of characters. First, Sue, or a cane, or staff, is composed of these kanji characters. This one means durable or strong, while this one means wood. It makes sense if you think about it. A cane is carrying a portion of a person's weight, so it should be a strong piece of wooden stick. One interesting Japanese proverb which includes tsue is this, Koroba no saki no tsue, which means prevention is better than cure, or look before you leap, or forewarned is forearmed, lalang. Tsukue means a desk or a table made of wood or any material if you want to. In the past, I often confused these two kanji characters. I mean, just look at them. Makura also has the kanji for a tree or wood, but the right radical, well, you need to use either brute memorization or wild imagination to get familiar with this character. I often imagine this character as a person lying down with his neck resting on a pillow. How about you? Can you share the style you use to familiarize yourself with this character? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. Hokoki Some residents in a facility have a poor gait, that is, they might find themselves having difficulty walking and balancing. As such, using a cane or staff while walking might be more dangerous. In this case, they might use several variations of walking frames, or in Japanese, Hokoki which is an instrument or a tool used to go on a walk. Suriding Bodo Now, the traditional and often considered by the natives as the safest way of moving a resident from the wheelchair to the bed and vice versa is through the use of a caregiver's body. <laughs> Sometimes though, the resident might be more than twice as heavy as you, and carrying them the traditional Japanese way might be more dangerous to both parties. As such, several tools are used to ease this process, one of which is the sliding bodo, or just sliding board. Beddo Beddo is just bed. Moving on. As you might notice by now, there are some things used in the Japanese caregiving setting that doesn't have a Japanese word. For example, the bed. Historically, Japanese people don't use beds. They just set their photon on the floor and voila, they sleep on the floor. When foreign things were introduced into the Japanese archipelago, for example, the bed, the Japanese people usually use those things' original names and adapt them to the Japanese way of speaking, where words usually end in vowels. That is why the sliding board is sridingu bodo and the bed is beddo. Saidureru, oba teburu. Other examples of this are the saidureru and oba teburu, which are just the side rails to protect the resident, especially the active ones from falling off the bed, and the over table, which are used for various things but mainly to serve as a table where bedridden residents can eat their food on. One interesting fact about saidureru is that the natives usually or tend to use sakku, than the mouthful saidureru. Sakku just means fence. Shitsu, mofu. Sheets or rinin are just bed sheets. However, it's important to emphasize this when speaking the word. This is a long vowel mark often used only in katakana and is known as cho on. Mofu is a blanket. It is composed of these kanji characters which mean hair or fur and a cloth or linen. Shoto dai. In English, it's just a side table or a bed side table. This may mean a floor, but in this context, it means a bed. Remember in the past, Japanese people often sleep in the floor. The floor in the past is also considered their bed. This, commanded, it means a head, while this means a rack, stand, or a table. To help you familiarize, this character is just a table placed at the head part of the bed. So that's it! Those are some of the words commonly encountered or used in a caregiving setting which I deemed easy enough for any beginner, absolutely any beginner, to familiarize. I really do hope you've learned something from this video and take note some of those words because some of them might be used when doing your recording. 
If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like or comment and of course share this video with an interested friend. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Believe me or not, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for your time watching this video. See you in the next one. Babush!